welcome back. I'm Connie and we're back in the kitchen here at Treetop Lodge. And we've been really busy, which I'll talk about in a little bit. But I'm actually going to do film two episodes today because I'm going to make truffles. And once I do this, they need to set up, so we'll finish them in the second one. So I'll tell you what I did here. I'll just get right into it. Four ounces of unsweetened chocolate, eight ounces of semi-sweet chocolate, melted in the double boiler. That double boiler is great. It's allowed me to get into things like chocolate desserts and such and get a beautiful, nice, smooth texture. Now we're going to add eight ounces of unsalted butter. I always end up with butter on my hands here, don't I? I'm going to blend that in. And this is by no means a healthy treat, but I made these recently for a group of ladies that were up here and they really enjoyed them. So now I'm experimenting a little bit further with the recipe. And if my experiment with the tins turns out well, then these will be perfect for our Valentine's Wine in the Woods, which is coming up on the 14th, which is sold out, so don't call. But then we have another wine dinner scheduled for March 13th, which will celebrate my birthday with a lot of my favorite things. And we have another Beer in the Woods coming up on April 10th. We did one a couple weeks ago, and Oh, it turned out so great. It, we had so much fun. Wonderful group of people. So we have added beer to our repertoire up here. I even made beer salad dressing and beer sorbet. And I'm not a beer drinker, so that's saying something. Look how gorgeous this is. All I'm doing now, I think my chocolate cooled a little bit, just getting the butter worked in there. Now normally what you do then, when you get the ingredients mixed, you put it aside, let it sit for a couple hours, and then you can form it into balls. I'm going to try scooping it directly into these little cups and letting it set up that way. So that's what I meant by an experiment. So, oh, it's just so smooth and <sighs> wicked. I mean, who doesn't like chocolate? Once I really feel comfortable with this basic recipe, I'm going to start expanding out into some white chocolate and some dark chocolate. But... All right, I've got the butter incorporated. Now I'm going to add a 14 ounce can of sweetened condensed milk. Just gonna blend that in and while I'm doing that, we've got so much coming up. We have scrapbooking. We have an open scrap on February 20th. Anybody's welcome. We've been playing Euchre on Saturday nights. Our next one is February 13th. And you come on up and I put out a bunch of food and sandwiches and snacks and you can play euchre all over the house and the winner, the high point getter that night will get a $50 gift certificate to the lodge and the euchre pot will go to one of the players by random draw. So I supply everything except if you want to bring a bottle of wine or some beer you can bring that yourself. I don't do that. So that'll be fun. So you can give me a call on that and we've got a couple more weddings booked we will hopefully have a baby shower soon. The couple that was buried here in August have finally made an announcement. They're expecting, and actually today is the day they're going to find out if they're having a boy or a girl. So I'm anxious to check my messages later and see if I was right, because I made a prediction. So we'll see. Oh, this is so beautiful. It pours slowly, but it's worth it. So basically what this is going to do after I get it into the pans, hopefully, is it just kind of sets back up, takes back its original form, but with all the different things that I blended into it. And I've got a few things for toppings. I'll just go ahead and top it while they're sitting up. And what this could do, if this works, is be a real time saver when I have to make a large quantity, rather than having to roll them all by hand. Because the problem there is my hands are warm, and it keeps loosening up on me. So there we go. Now to that, now here at this point you can add whatever flavoring you like, about six tablespoons of something. I'm using Kahlua today. So that's that. Now, you could use a whisk at this point, but I like to use the scraper because then I can really move everything together. So we had a great time at Christmas. So we had some fun parties. We had a kind of a crazy New Year's Eve. That was fun. So we've just got lots of stuff coming up. We've got free meals coming up next week, which I talk about a lot. And I gotta say, there have been several people who have been incredibly generous and made donations to the program for our team. 
and we really appreciate that, as do our guests. Uh, next week we'll be cooking and we're going to do a special German style dinner in honor of Horst Prodzik who passed away recently. Um, his wife Lil is the reason that I came into Free Meals in the first place. She was my team leader. And more genuine, loving, gracious people you're never going to meet. So we're going to do a special dinner for our guests in honor of Horst. All right, this is where it gets interesting. If this works, I'm just going to use my, my little scoop, try not to make a big mess, and drop it in there. So now, when we, in the second episode, these will hopefully have set up. <laughs> and if I have any left over, we'll roll some up. And, um, and the next, for the rest of this show, I'm going to make a couple more appetizers, things that I've been serving up here at the lodge, people have been asking about. And yes, I'm going to give away my secrets as to how impressive and delicious they are and how simple. So that'll be fun. So we'll do that next. I think this will be just perfect. Nice little bite of sweet at the end of a meal. And I made it. The first time I made truffles a couple weeks ago, I was up here all by myself one night. And I just kept wishing there was somebody here to eat them because they just smelled so good. But the ladies really enjoyed them the next day. Oh, those are pretty. I think it would be fun to do this. And then maybe if I had some white chocolate, like swirl it in before it sets up. Because right now it's got the almost a pudding consistency. We have our uh, shearing is coming up pretty soon. Um, I think May 9th and 10th, and we'll do what we did last year where we'll have a lunch in here and guests can go over and watch the shearing and purchase the fiber directly off the animals. I just have to confirm the dates with Katie and Matt. And we have a Mother's Day tea on Sunday, May 8th, which I think, I don't even think I posted that yet, but I'll get that onto Facebook in the next couple days. So... Still talking to people about holding some classes up here. We want to get some more painting classes going and different, different things, mandalas, um, adult coloring, painting rocks, stones and things, just all sorts, whatever, whatever comes to mind really. So if, if you or someone you know would like to come up and do a class, feel free, give me a call. And I'll give you my numbers next time around. Now, I'm going to try sinking some little caramel balls in some of these, just to be something different. And then I'm going to sprinkle them with some of these toppings. Today, I got some silver edible glitter dust. Let's see if I can do this whole thing without getting chocolate on my hands. And some ground pecans and some coconut. So I'm going to finish this up and pop these in the fridge. And this part, I'm going to transfer over to a bowl. And... When we get back, we'll build some appetizers. So come on back in a few. I'm just going to finish up. I'll see you shortly. Hello, I'm Elgin Nichols, and I'm here to invite you to watch our weekly calendar of events on Charter 191 and AT&T Channel 99. Learn what local events are going on, and if you have a special event that you want our viewing audience to know about, Call us at our TV station at 248-628-9658 or you can locate our dates and times for our program broadcast by going to our website, occtv.org. See you there. We're back. I put the truffles in the back in the cooler to let them set up. And now I'm going to do something that has become a lodge favorite to the point where I don't even ask anymore. I just automatically make this appetizer. These are dates and I'm going to wrap them in bacon. I'm going to put them in the broiler. Now you could use the whole thing and wrap it, but the, I'd like them to be bite sized because these are very rich. And truly, no matter how many of these I make, they're gone in a heartbeat. So we'll wrap them in the bacon, throw them under the broiler, and then when I take them out, I'll drizzle them with some fig sauce. Just makes it wicked. 
So, nice package of bacon here. Of course, if you're not a bacon fan, this probably won't appeal to you. And I'm sure there is one or two people, you know, in the world that doesn't like bacon. Well, let's say in Oxford. Um, I put a piece of foil on my cooking rack, my cookie sheet, and then I put a little, well, I kind of use that for cooling things, but I want to raise it up. I don't want it sitting in the grease. I want it to kind of crisp all the way around. And that's all there is to it. And when it's done, it is so good. And like I said, these have become so popular that I just automatically make them for, as an appetizer for every event. Done this, um, this way. I've done it with water chestnuts, and then I use more of a soy, make it kind of a faux rumaki, the saltier thing. But I like the contrast of the sweetness of the date, the salt from the bacon, and then this little touch of fig drizzle that goes on when it's hot and just kind of caramelizes as it hits. And I'm getting very, very hungry. And I'm not actually making a meal here. Just making, showing off some of the things that we do. This is the kind of thing that if you show up too early to an event, you're liable to end up in the kitchen helping me do this. So I generally get about, out of a slice of bacon, I get three pieces. When this starts to warm up a little bit to room temperature, you want to go ahead and separate it before it gets too soft so that it doesn't split on you. And I'm going to throw these under the broiler and then keep an eye on them because they don't take long. I don't cook them all the way to super crisp. I like a little bit of that texture still there. It's probably a matter of taste, but I'm making them so I can do them however I want. And something else I want to try, and I haven't done it yet, but I will soon, is I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm actually going to stuff the dates with blue cheese, then roll them in the bacon. I think that will be wonderful. I was experimenting last night with uh, what will become the main course for the Valentine's dinner, which is a beef rollatini stuffed with blue cheese and spinach, and that's going to be served with a sauce on the side made of lingonberry jam, and dark chocolate because it's Valentine's Day. So we've got to make it kind of decadent. <clears throat> but I always like to do the sauces on the side in case somebody thinks that's just a little too weird. Or they're just not into the sweet thing, which is fine. So that's what we're doing. Just looking forward. We've got a beautiful day today. When you guys see this, think back to Monday, February 1st, and you'll think, yeah, that was a beautiful day. See, I start to get down towards the end of the package here, or the end of the strip, and it gets a little shredded, but it's all good eats. We did 300 of these for a wedding, and it hadn't been out very long, and I said to one of the servers, we need more bacon dates, and she said, there are no more bacon dates. They were gone. And it tells you anything. So remember now, when we do the wine dinners, I generally, you know, it's generally meat or poultry, but we also can do vegetarian options with no problem so long as I know in advance and of course you have to call to confirm your reservation anyway we had a couple up for the beer dinner and they were vegetarian so I just went ahead and adjusted that and they were very happy I made a brown rice couscous black pepper and lemon filling with sweet red peppers and uh, they said it was very good and I tasted some of the filling because I had some left over and it was good and, uh, you know, very hearty. So these are going to go in the oven. If you put them in under regular cook, probably about 10 minutes, I'm going to throw them under the broiler so they crisp up a little quicker. And that's a defective toothpick. And there you go. Another one of my secrets revealed. And then I'm going to do another thing. I, I make all these different. I call them bruschetta. They're not necessarily traditional bruschetta but I do these bruschetta-ish things. And that's fun because I can just kind of do whatever I want to do. So what I want to do here is I'm going to take some cream cheese, which is just such an easy base to start with. I'm going to fine chop some Kalamata olives. And then we'll blend the two together. And I made some, just took a baguette, thin toast, a little bit of... Uh, olive oil and red, red Hawaiian sea salt. All right, so into the chopper, 
goes some of our Kalamata. Oh, Kalamata oh, smells so good. You know what? You really don't want to sit here and watch me sort this out. So why don't I do this? I want to retain the juice because I'm not going to use the whole jar. And if I don't have juice, they'll dry out. There we go. But I don't want to get too much juice in here because it'll get too loose. All right. Handy dandy chopper. This is almost like making a tapenade, but I'm going to blend, blend it with the cream cheese to make it more of a spread. I'm going to dust this with a little bit of black pepper. And that's really all you need. And we're going to blend in, excuse me for just a moment. Got my mixer fork. I'm back. For now, we'll start with about half a block of softened cream cheese. <laughs> Let's move these, shall we? Just going to blend that down like that. Blend my olives. In. Oh, all oh, this smells good. All oh, this smells so good. And quite often, especially when I do a show like this and I'm doing all appetizers, I make a meal out of it. I mean, I'm actually one of those people that'll go to a restaurant and order two or three appetizers as a meal. This is pretty. I'm going to actually make this for Valentine's Day as an appetizer because uh, it kind of gets that red color a little bit, makes the cream cheese kind of pink. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. And then you just do that. And you have these delicious little bites. I'm going to do something real quick. When you have something under the broiler, you don't want to leave it unattended too long. Okay, that's coming along nicely. Then we come back, we're going to make deviled eggs. I love deviled eggs. We're going to make a little twist. So I'm going to finish getting these put together. And then I'll put it all on a platter, and you see we'll have a beautiful appetizer platter. And then again, remember, you have to watch the next episode. I think this one is 23, so that'll be 24. And that's where we will finish up with the truffles, because right now they're setting up and doing their thing and becoming, I don't know, truffle-like. So come on back. I'll finish this up, get the bacon out, and we'll make deviled eggs. Oxford Orion Fish helps provide emergency aid to the people of Oxford, Ligorian, Addison, and Oakland Townships. One of the only self-served food banks in the state, Oxford Orient Fish provides once-a-month food supplies based on the size of the family. To donate, volunteer, or to find out more, call Oxford Orient Fish at 248 628-3933 or go to their website OxfordOrientFish.org Oxford Orient Fish Neighbors Helping Neighbors And we're back and I took the bacon out of the oven and Drizzled it with the fig drizzle. Yum. So now I'm splitting some eggs. I'm gonna keep my whites intact. And we're gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna see if we can't come up with enough room to do all this. There we go. Oh, that one's not cut yet. <laughs> so this, instead of using mayonnaise or sour cream or the different things a lot of times you use for deviled eggs, I'm going to use avocado. Even though it's January, the avocados right now are just luscious. So if you like guacamole, I would imagine this is something you would like because it's going to actually be similar to that when we're done. And it's just super, super simple. If you notice, instead of just popping the egg out, I roll it in my hand a little bit and then the yolk just pops right out. I boiled these up earlier and peeled them because I really didn't think you wanted to stand here and watch me peel eggs. Fascinating though it may be. There we go. 
Oh, that bacon smells good. Mm -mm -mm. If I didn't have to keep talking right now, I'd have one of those in my mouth, along with a piece of the cream cheese. But you better believe this is not all leaving here today. Quite often when I do a show like this, I have so much food that I send it home with you-know-who, but uh, or back to the studio, rather. But today, some of it's staying right here. Hold on, let me grab a fork. Sorry if I seem a little dis you know, discombobulated today, but plans changed at the last minute on things, so I just kind of had to adjust. But that's not a problem. I will forgive eventually. <laughs> so I'm just going to break up the egg. I'm gonna, a little bit of, which one am I using? The Mediterranean salt. Now remember, with these salts like this, you just don't use as much at all. Just a few cranks, a little bit of black pepper, which I ground myself. Thank you very much. And a dash of lemon. Not much. I'm going to add a little bit more of each of those to the avocado. Now, avocados are fun to do. Just slice the skin all the way around. Give it a twist, and there you go. I'm going to put that avocado directly in, and this will become kind of the creamy binder for the deviled eggs. Oh, is that nice. And I forgot, I was going to pick up a fresh lime, and I completely forgot. So we'll just go with the lemon for today. Now this avocado is really perfect for, you can let it go a little softer if you're making guacamole. This one is just right. You don't want it too, too firm. Firm is good if you're going to slice it or use it in a salad or on a sandwich. But I want it to be able to cream it, mix it in with my eggs. And then you get kind of, this would be fun for St. Patrick's Day. Make guacamole deviled eggs because they'll be green. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Now a touch more salt. Touch more pepper. <laughs> Forgot what it was there for a minute. And now with all these tastes and such going on, if I were to taste this right now, I wouldn't be very accurate. But when I smell, I can smell egg, I can smell avocado, smell a touch of that lemon. That's really all, all I need. Get my other handy dandy little, this is the easiest way to cheat at deviled eggs. Rather than trying to sit there with two spoons and making quenelles and everything else, just go ahead, scoop, plop, and we'll have more egg white than filling. And if I wasn't doing it this way, if I was just doing regular deviled eggs, I always make a couple extra eggs because I like to really load them up, really fill them up, get a good bite. And these are fun. When I make my straight deviled eggs, I top them with jalapeno or bacon or caramelized onions, all sorts of different stuff. Deviled eggs are so simple, but they can be so impressive in the middle of a, an appetizer tray, which is where these are going to end up. Oh, my goodness, that smells good. Again, I tell you, if you were here... All right, let's set this aside for right now. Oh, it's a good thing I've got a crew coming in later to clean up. Hokey smokes. All right. Get one of my fun platters. And we'll fill it up. Whoops. Don't tip over. There we go. And you can also throw some cheese and crackers on something like this if you want. But we're going to mix it up just a little bit. Oh, bacon, dates, fig, mm-mm-mm. So I'm going to do my spiel real quick while you sit here watching me do this. I'm Connie uh, from Treetop Lodge here on OCTV and YouTube. You can call me anytime at 248-933-4579. You can hit me up on Facebook. It's Treetop Lodge Oxford. You can find us on our website, which is www.treetoplodgeoxford.com. 
And you can email me at stormy3958 at att.net. And that's how you get in touch with me and find out what we've got going on or make your own plans. If you have a birthday or an anniversary or a shower coming up, we can do just about anything. And as I've always said, we cater it to you. You don't come up and choose things from a prearranged menu. You come up and you say, this is what I want to do, and that's what we do. I'm just going to lightly dust a little bit of fresh parsley. Oh, I'll tell you what, that just smells like summertime to me. A little bit of fresh parsley on there. And this is all washed, that's why I'm leaving it in the bag because it's really wet. Now, like I said before, small weddings. We've got another wedding coming up soon. And um, we've, you know, we've done things like a macaroni and cheese bar. We're going to do a chili bar. We're going to do kind of a Western barbecue theme. It's just not your typical place that we do here. Because your events, your wedding, your birthdays, your showers should be all about you and how you want it to be and get to enjoy your favorite things. And that's the experience that we give you up here at the Lodge. Just as unique as you are. So join me again up here. Join me on the show. And remember, after you watch this one, you have to watch for the next one because that's where we're going to finish up our delicious truffles. But in the meantime, look what we've got. A nice little tray of very fancy appetizers. So come back and visit me soon. I love doing this. I'm sorry I've been away so long, but well, luckily it's because we've been so busy. So in the meantime, enjoy your food, enjoy one another, be nice to one another. Smile at somebody today, they'll wonder what you're up to. <laughs> I'll see you soon. You're watching OCTV, Oxford Community Television, serving Oxford, Addison Township, and the Village of Leonard. Oxford Orion Fish helps provide emergency aid to the people of Oxford, Ligorian, Addison, and Oakland Townships. One of the only self-served food banks in the state, Oxford Orient Fish provides once-a-month food supplies based on the size of the family. To donate, volunteer, or to find out more, call Oxford Orient Fish at 248-628-3933 or go to their website, OxfordOrientFish.org. Oxford Orient Fish, neighbors helping neighbors. Hi, I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Terry Stiles. Did you know that Charter Channel 191 and AT&T Channel 99 are the only television stations you can find all the events and news just for you? Oxford News This Week is your news closer to home. Catch us right here weekdays at noon, 6.30 and 11 p.m. and weekends at noon and 11 p.m. See, See you, you there. there.